Consider a parameterized curve, x equals f of t, y equals g of t, and t goes from alpha to beta. We've seen that the length is the integral from alpha to beta of the square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared dt. And there's a shorthand for this. This whole integrand, square root of x prime squared plus y prime squared dt, is sometimes denoted by ds. And ds is sometimes called the element of arc length. By the way, the case you probably saw before in single variable calculus is when the curve is a graph of a function. And then x and t are the same thing, so you parameterize it by x. And then ds is the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared dx. So this is what you integrate over x to calculate the length of a graph. But this formula for parameterized curves works for more general curves, which are not graphs. Okay, I now want to consider rotating this curve around the x-axis to get a surface. So we're going to look at the surface of revolution around the x-axis. So that means we take our curve in the xy plane. Doesn't have to be a graph, but I'm drawing a graph because that's easier. Then we add a third dimension, which we'll call z, and we rotate this curve around the x-axis to get a three-dimensional surface. I now want to ask, what is the area of this surface of revolution? So here's how we can find the area. The idea is to approximate the surface by a bunch of thin ribbons. So what we do is we take two consecutive points on the curve, which are close together. We draw the line segment between them. This will have some length, which we'll call delta s. And then we rotate this line segment around the x-axis to get a ribbon. And we can define the area to be the limit as the length of these segments, delta s, goes to zero of the sum of the areas of these ribbons. Now what is the area of a ribbon? Well, this ribbon is approximately going around a circle of radius y, where y is the value of y is somewhere on this segment because the distance to the x-axis is equal to y. And so the circumference of the circle is going to be 2 pi y. And then the length of this little segment that we're rotating is delta s. You can then show that in this limit, the limit becomes the integral where the delta s turns into a ds. So we get 2 pi y ds. Or if we want to expand that out as functions of t, this is the integral from alpha to beta of 2 pi y of t square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared dt. So it looks just like the formula for length, except you have to multiply by 2 pi y because that's the circumference of a circle obtained by taking the point where you are on the curve and rotating around the x-axis. Let's do an example. So let's calculate the area of the unit sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1. So you may know that the answer is equal to 4 pi. But let's do it using this method to make sure it works. There's actually a little pitfall, as you'll see. So how can we think of the unit sphere as a surface of revolution? Well, in the xy plane, 
I can take the unit circle, which I'll parameterize as x equals cosine t, y equals sine t, and t goes from 0 to 2 pi. We can then rotate the circle around the x-axis, and we'll get the unit sphere. Okay, so as I said, there's a pitfall here. If we don't notice this pitfall, then to find the area, we just plug in the formula from the previous page. So the area is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 2 pi y of t, the square root of x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared dt. However, this is actually wrong. Why is it wrong? Well, suppose I just take the upper half of the unit circle and I rotate that around the x-axis. Then if you look at the picture, you see that I'm going to get the entire unit sphere. So if I just rotate the upper half of the unit circle, I get the whole unit sphere. If I were to rotate the whole unit circle around the x-axis, I would cover the unit sphere twice, and I would get double the answer that I want. So to get the correct answer, I have to just use the upper half of the unit circle, or just use the lower half. Let's just use the upper half. So that means instead of integrating from 0 to 2 pi, I actually just want to integrate from 0 to pi. So let's try it this way and see if it works. So then this is the integral from 0 to pi of 2 pi times y of t, and y of t is sine t. And you'll remember from the calculation of the length of a circle that for this particular parameterization, ds is just equal to dt. In other words, this square root of x prime squared plus y prime squared is the square root of sine squared plus cosine squared, which is this 1. So I just put a dt here. So an antiderivative of this is minus 2 pi cosine t. I evaluate at t equals pi and t equals 0. So I get minus 2 pi times um, minus 1 minus 1. And putting that all together, it's 4 pi. So it worked. And now you can use this technique to calculate the areas of some more interesting services of revolution.